Hey guys, welcome back to Priest Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the best free game recording program. The program in question is MSI Afterburner. Why this particular program? With its simplistic design and features, easy setup process, as well as minimal performance impact on your system, I think it's the best suitable candidate for the job. It has every necessity tool for you to use and make your videos. But in case you want to find out more about this program, I do have a detailed video where I take a look at all the features. In this video, let's see how to set it up, how to use it and do a little demonstration. So once you install the program and open it up, this is how it looks like. This program was primarily designed to adjust your system, overclock it, change the voltage, the fan speed, as well as take a look at some benchmarking. But there is a recording capability. In this current UI, drag your mouse to the left and click on this little cogwheel. You'll get MSI Afterburner properties. You can browse through all of these options, but main thing you need to focus on is the video capture. This is where you set up everything. You'll notice that options slash features are grouped and categorized. Global video capture hotkeys, video capture properties, compatibility properties, audio capture properties. Simple as that. So let's have a look at the hotkey. For the most part, things are self-explanatory. If you want to find out more, just drag your mouse over anything and leave it there for two to three seconds. The pop-up bubble shows up and you can read detailed information. This is also what makes this program very simplistic to use. Everything is explained right here. But to keep it simple, change the video capture to any combination of the hotkeys that you want to press to start and stop the recording. Skip both of these and keep moving on. We have video capture properties. You can change the capture mode whether you want it to be mixed as in both desktop and 3D application or just desktop or 3D application. Since I want to record a 3D application slash a game, I'll choose this. Choosing a specific mode can help the program determine exactly what you want to capture so it doesn't get confused quote unquote. Next we have a video format. I just choose MJPG compression. You can also use external plugins. Choosing that and clicking here, you can then choose whatever other plugin slash encoder you want to use. I believe these two are actually for CPU encoding and the second one is for graphics card encoding. To keep it simple, I'll stick with this. Next we have a container format which is basically choose between AVI or MKV. I'll use AVI. Next, set up the quality slider. If you guys ever used Photoshop, you probably noticed how there is no noticeable difference, for example, between 75% and let's say 90 or even 100%. Not a lot of noticeable difference. So you can get by with using lower setting here, but to keep it simple, I'll just choose 100. To decrease the impact on your system, try lowering it a little bit. Maybe to 80%, you'll still be just fine. Here we can choose frame size. Since I do want to capture the whole game, I'll just choose full frame. This simply means, let's say if the game is running at 1080p resolution, if that's the frame size of the game, it's gonna capture all of those 1080p and it's going to encode it in 1080p. And then final video will be 1080p frame size slash resolution. If I chose half the frame, it would still record the whole game, but the exported video would be half of 1080p. To not get you confused, again, this affects only the exported video. Next, we can choose a frame rate. Just to give you a hint, if you are recording a desktop, 30 frames per second is just, is just fine. Or if it's any game that doesn't have lots of movement. But to be safe, you can just choose 60 frames per second. Next, we can limit the frame rate of a certain game. I'll leave it disabled for now. Finally, we have video folder, which is where all the videos are stored. You can change it by clicking browse. Next, we have video capture compatibility properties. If you run into some type of issues, usually you can come in here and tick some of these options or untick them, and it's gonna fix those issues. First, we have multi-threaded optimization. If the processor in your computer has more cores or more threads, you can utilize all of those here or some of them, whichever you want. I just choose automatic. Next, I'm gonna skip most of these, but I'll mention MJPG decoder. Enabling or disabling this, you'll have to test this one on your own, but enabling or disabling this one. Finally, we have audio capture properties. You'll notice that you can choose two audio sources, which means if you are recording a game, you can choose to record the sound of the game, and then that leaves you with second audio source, which you can use to record your microphone. 
so you'll be able to record both of those and then edit those in video editing software. Clicking here, you'll notice that it reveals a couple of options. No need to focus so much on the first line, but just focus on capture device and playback device. Capture device are devices that are inputting sound into the computer. For example, microphone. Playback devices are speakers, headphones, for example. For the first audio source, I'll choose the sound that's coming out of my computer. So I'll choose playback device. Then under here, I'll find my speakers. As you can see, they are on the list. Yours might be named something different. To find out what exactly you need to choose, Open up the audio mixer or volume mixer on your computer and you'll notice that under device for me it says I'm using Focusrite USB audio and it says right here speakers. So as you can see that's what I selected, speakers, Focusrite USB audio. Next for the audio source number two, I'll choose my microphone. So here I choose capture device and then I find my microphone which is this one right here. I can recognize it because there's a model number C1U which is the microphone that I have and there it is. You can also choose to have a push to talk hotkey for both of these. Now the way this particular option works to my understanding is if you have one of the sound cards that captures multiple channels it's going to basically mix all of those into simple stereo sound. Also I think but don't quote me on it if you have one of those 5.1 or 7.1 surround systems it's going to mix the sound into simple stereo. Since I'm not going to use this and I don't have any of those, I'll just turn this off. Next, this drop down menu lets us choose stereo rip or stereo mix. What does that mean? Well, first option will simply take the audio from the speakers as it's coming out, unmodified. The second option will record audio as you have configured it. If you lowered the sound a little bit, it's going to record it that way with the sound lowered a little bit. Final option lets me mix multiple audio tracks slash audio sources into single audio track. Since I have selected two audio sources, I can have that option here, but I do not want that to happen. Great functionality of this program is it allows you to record your audio sources into separate audio tracks. That means if you import your video into a video editing software, you're going to have two audio tracks. One audio track will contain the speakers sound slash sound that was coming out of the speakers and the second audio track will contain the microphone that was recorded. That means you'll be able to edit each one of those separately and that for me is a feature that I must have. At some points in the game the music inside the game or simply audio from the game could get too loud and sometimes I might need to turn that down inside the video editing process and this allows me to do that. So I'm gonna click apply and OK. That's it. Remember your hotkey and let's simply go into the game. So in this particular instance, I'm going to use Solitaire. It's not a crazy game, but it will do for this explanation. What you're seeing right here is simple overlay or on-screen display. Let's go back to MSI, click here and go to on-screen display. You'll see that you have hotkeys to toggle this or hide it. I recommend leaving it as it is. One more quick thing, you can go to monitoring and you can actually find what you want to be shown in on-screen display and simply set the property of it to be shown once you turn it on click here show on in on-screen display then you can configure it the way you want it to be so you have a bunch of options that you can or if you want you can show in there so let's see i can choose this apply and there we go as you can see i just turned on gpu temperature and i have it set up as a graph and you can see that there's a graph right there we can actually click here and change it for example to text and I'll click apply and uh, you'll notice how right now it changed. Uh, I'm actually going to turn that off and if I click apply, go back, as you can see, it disappears. So you can change those. It's very simple to do it like that. But I'm just going to leave it at default as it is. So what information do I have here? It's showing me what driver or in what mode is the application running. In this case, in the 3 d 9 or DirectX 9 mode. A couple of more modes, OpenGL Vulkan mode, for example. So that, that exists as well. And finally, we have frame rate, frames per second. As you can see, this game doesn't have a lot of movement, so the frame rate is very low. But to record, remember, I have set it up to be control and numpad 1. And as you can see, recording starts. It's giving me also a couple of information, how much time has elapsed, the size of the recording, the speed, I think, of the recording, something like that. So I can just play the game, I guess. My mom would love, love this. She loves to play this game. I watched her play, but I'm not that good. But let's try a little bit. Now I'll just press control 1 or numpad 1 once again. 
and you'll notice that the recording has finished. One thing I would like to mention is you probably are worried about this on-screen display, this over here, and your reaction might be, hey, I don't want that to be shown in my videos. Well, that's pretty simple. Go back to the program, the cog wheel, go to on-screen display, there's an option, show on-screen display on capture screenshots and videos, untick it, and simply hit OK. We can go back, record a little bit, I'll just, I don't know, try to click a little more. So, yeah, I'm not that good, but yeah, let's just shake this a little bit so that we know that's the recording, and I'll stop it. So the great thing is we can just open up the library videos, and we can go to Captured, and these are our captured videos. Actually, these two are the captured videos. I'll simply double-click to have the video open up, and you'll notice that it's being recorded, and there is a display, as you can see. As I was playing, you'll notice, yeah, I'm moving stuff. And there we go. Let's try playing the other video. And as you can see, the on-screen display is not there. And that does it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Feel free to leave your comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next upcoming video. Priest, signing out. Messed up a lot. Used to be waiting for something or someone to give me my spot. God only show you the way. It's all up to the plan and the paper and people yeah. you brought. I learned what I thought. I hope that they notice and give us a shot. I swear on me team. Been lying a lot. Might give us away. And what is the cost? The truth don't face. I think that we caught. I hear what you say. But jealousy rides the brain.